Hi guys, uh, my name is Chindai Marekereke. My um, Twitter handle is at M A R E N G Z. Um, I'm an information security guy and I'm also into data science and machine learning. So I've been getting a lot of questions on um, people asking how can we do our machine learning online. So you might be used to uh, using Anaconda and Jupyter on your laptops. So if you're using R or Python. So there are different options that you can look at if you want to do it online. Uh, the first one is Azure Machine Learning Studio. So it's run by Microsoft and they offer a free option that you can actually use to, to do a number of things. Um, so I've, I've recommended this to, to a couple of friends and, and they, they're facing trouble and how to use it. So this one, you have a project or you have experiments, you can have web services, you can have your notebooks, you can have your data sets, train models. Um, this is an example of um, an experiment that you can have. So in this case, uh, we have bike bias data and then you want to use Piano and Keras to to make predictions uh, I'm assuming it's a classification problem uh, I've, I've taken this from from the um, demonstration so this is not the same as, as a notebook this is actually a, after you've done your your coding in your notebook and you have your script which is ready to run so you have your input which is a data set and you have the modules that you want to use in this case which is piano and keras and then you have the Python script that you want to execute. So if you maximize this here, you see the code that is there to run. So this is actually production type code uh, that's been optimized and, and runs um, um, it's using an activation of ReLU um, it has 10 epochs and then it will return a data frame. So after you've run it, you click on this button to run. And after you've run it, you have two outputs. Uh, and what we want to look at is this first one. The output can be seen on this dot here. If you click on it and you click visualize, you actually be able to see what the output is. And in this case, this is our output. And it's a classification problem whether you, whether someone is a, is a bike buyer or not. So this is an example of how you can do a, a machine learning task in machine learning studio, in, in Microsoft Azure Machine Learning Studio. And it's actually one of the most, uh, what can I say, most comprehensive offerings out there. But it's a bit complicated for some people to use. Uh, so I'll try to show you how you can do the same in, in, in another option, which is collaboratory by Google. So with collaboratory, you have something that looks similar to your normal Jupyter notebook, which is this. So if you want to go, just enter this URL in your browser. I'm using Firefox and I've have, I haven't had any problems. I'm sure you can also use uh, Google Chrome. So collaboratory works similar to your Jupyter notebook. And you can also use the GPU accelerated um, runtime. So what we want to do is we want to do an experiment using TensorFlow. So what we're going to use, we're going to use the normal TensorFlow tutorials. So if you type TensorFlow tutorial in your Google search, and then you open the first link that comes up, you will see the getting started examples from Google themselves. And the one we want to use is a basic classification. So if you click that tutorial, it will show you the detailed steps. It's going to use the MNIST dataset with fashion uh, images, which is clothes images, and we're going to do a, a, a classification. 
So what we want to do now, instead of downloading this code and running it in a Jupyter Notebook like we normally do, we want to run it in Google Colab. So if you click that link, you'll be able to open it in Google Colab and to run either using your machine or run using Google servers. So this is the outlook. On the left side is a bookmark section which shows the difference within the the notebook. So depending on your headers, you know there are different categories for headers, H1, H2, H3, uh, for example, if it's HTML. If you look at it here, depending on the hierarchy of that heading, if you see the main heading is one hash here, and then the subheading is two hashes here, you can actually see the bookmarks on the left side. So we're going to go through the notebook and see how it works. So before you run your notebook, you need to connect to a runtime. So you can choose a local runtime or a hosted runtime. And I'm going to choose a hosted runtime so that our processing is fast. So here it's saying initializing. And then now it says connected. And it shows you connected to Python 3 Google Compute Engine backend. So it means you've been connected. So if you want to run a cell, when you click the cell, you will get this icon which looks like a play button. It's the icon for running a cell. So if you click it, it will run the cell. In this case, we are importing a TensorFlow, the TensorFlow and Keras modules and it shows the version that we are using so i'm going to skip the text part because we don't really need it to run our, our our example so here i'm going to import our data set which is a fashion data set like i've mentioned from N M N I S T, and then we're going to see the class names or rather specify the class names so here we are saying our label will be a binary number between 0 and 9. And then on the la la last line, it's a, it's a class. Uh, we want to see what our data set looks like. So we have 60,000 images. And uh, it's represented by an image with a pixel size 28 by 28. And then the length of our training labels, 60,000 as well. So these are just basic checks on... Um, what our data looks like. Um, and then we go to the next step, which is pre-processing the data. So here we print, um, we plot rather, not print our image. And then we go to the next step where we are specifying our training set and our validation set or our test set. And then we want to display the first 25 images from the training set and display the class name below each image. So we have our anchor boost and we have our codes. And then the next step is uh, building the model. So first of all, we need to set up our layers. So we're using an activation of um, TF ReLU. It can be found in an in tensorflow.nn relu. And then we're going to use also softmax for the additional layer. So we have two layers, as you can see. The first one is uh, 128 neurons, and then the second one has 10 neurons or 10 dots, depending on, on what you want to call it. And then we want to compile our model. Our model has what is known as a loss function. Um, this is not a full introduction into neural networks, but you should know what a loss function is. Uh, this measures uh, like how accurate our model is during training. And then we have our optimizer, 
Uh, this will be based on the data that is seized and, and, and the loss function. And then we have our metrics that we want to measure our model by using accuracy in this, in this instance. The next step is to train our model by using five epochs. So now it's starting to run. So if we're running this on a local machine, this would actually take a bit of time. But since we're running it um, using the Google Compute Engine, it would take less time. This should be pretty fast. So if you want this to, to take be more accurate, you can actually increase your, your, your number of epochs. And then now we want to evaluate our accuracy. So we can see we have 87% or 88 if you want to round off. Uh, now we want to test, make predictions. We're using our, our test image. So we run that, and then we can check the first one. So our prediction will be an array of 10 numbers, um, which uh, describe um, the confidence of the model for, for, for each of the 10 articles of clothing. Um, Of which number nine is, is, is the one with the most highest confidence. Let's check what number nine is from what we said. Enco boots. Okay. Uh, so we can graph this if you want. Again, it's an ankle boot with 99% accuracy. So you can go on to print a lot of images. Uh, I'm not going to go further than that. Um, uh, you have all the images there. Just checking out which one is... is, is, is. The best um, accuracy. So now we can use the train model to make a prediction about a single image and see what it will say. So remember we had our labels there at the top. If you want to make it clear, you can now then go further and link our labels to, to a specific number like they've done here. So remember, we linked our class names as an integer value between 0 and 9 and the actual string. So here we're making a single prediction of, 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 of an image, which is the first image from a data set, which is an anchor boot. So thank you for listening. Um, this is just a simple introduction to, to, to how you can use Collab to do machine learning and in, in, it's in Python. So if this was useful and if this is helpful, you can get in touch with me at, um, at M-A-R-E-N-G-Z. That's my Twitter handle. Or you can email me at tmarengereke at hit.ac.w. I hope you liked it. Um, just yeah, get in touch if you if you like it. Cheers.